probably people out there, they, they go to this weekend, they'll be at dinner parties, they'll be at barbecues, they'll be at the beach and they'll be talking about the market and is it overinflated? Is it a dangerous time to get in there? Is, you know, the, the bubble growing too big? But the fact that apartments are by far and away the majority of the market, the fact that most 81% of the transactions are between one and three million, to me it says no. And when you say you can't compare this place to media cities, 100% you can. 100%. And I'll have an argument with anyone who says any different. But there is a perception out there that when uh, Ramadan hits, the market slows down, and, yeah. and I, I don't know, uh, people have more time away from the market, or yeah. it's not as busy. So, what did we see? Hello, and welcome to this week's episode of Taking Care of Business. This week, I'm joined by our managing director, Mark Walters. Morning. We're going to be taking a look at what's happened in the property market so far this year, particularly in Q1, as that's what we have most of our stats and data for. And we're going to see whether the market has behaved like Arsenal, maybe started well, but then petering out and falling off a bit of a cliff. Or is it like Manchester City and just getting stronger and stronger as the year goes on? So without further ado, Mark, I don't know if you want to lead us away with a few key points from what we've seen so far. Well, the first thing, Paul, have City ever won a European Cup? Or <laughs> not just yet. Not. Ask me again in f uh, five or six yeah, weeks. Oh. I'll, I'll <laughs> will do. Yeah, I will do. Um, no, I th do you know what? I think it's I think it's good we start with some numbers. I think from the DLB, um, they published their Q1 report a few weeks back, and it was 87.2 billion dirhams worth of property sold in Q1, which is a considerable record. It, it was, I think, for everyone. What 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 I like, obviously, we always look internally and we always look at what we do, but I like looking at external as well. And it's good that I get excited every single day when I come into work because I know not just all and also are doing well. Everyone else is doing well. The place is absolutely buzzing. So there's 87 points. Sorry, now let me jump in because I just want to pick up on on that point because I, I, I conscious sometimes we and the rest of the market can sound a bit like a new record with these huge figures uh, being chucked out there. So. Why do we think the market is still performing? Because we have got some headwinds. The interest rates are still going up and it doesn't seem to have impacted that much, but it, it, it does have an impact. Like w without uh, talking too much about ourselves, both we've got mortgages, both of our mortgage payments have gone up. People looking to enter the market, there's high, a higher cost to entry now. So w w with that, a couple of other things, why do we think the market is still flying as it is? Again, we're old. And we, I think we come in here sometimes, Paul, whether it be myself or you or Lewis and Kyle, and we can repeat ourselves in terms of what happened the month before. But I am going to repeat myself and what, what I'm going to say. And the place is thriving. And last week I went to Dubai Mall. And I don't know whether you've seen the pictures, but the pictures of Dubai Mall, it was... Over like, Eid. Oh, well, my worst nightmare. It was nothing like I've ever seen. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Now, that's obviously, it's a little bit, it's not like that every week, of course, but it was Eid. But the place everywhere you go is is booming. And like you say, not just internally, externally. Yet so, I've mentioned it many times about lifestyle and the way this place is set up and the things that the government are bringing in, initiatives, whether it be golden visas and, and whatnot, it's so easy to set up here. It's so easy to settle here. And again, for me, the most important part is my family. And I look at my two children and how secure they are, whether it be where I live, whether it be they go to a beach of a weekend, whether they're in JBR, whatever it may be, you know that they're secure, Paul. And I think a lot of people now, especially what's going on around the world with the unrest, whether it be in, 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 in the US or UK, there's nothing but bad news. And I think now people are starting to become wise to that. And the way the world is, you can work remotely and people now, a friend of mine, he came a couple of weeks back and he set a business up already and he's going to be trading in the next two or three weeks. So uh, this is a really good point, actually. So over the, the weekend, I was at one of the neighbors um, Eid parties. I was talking to, to some of the other, um, the other parents there who were there with the kids. And these are, are, are like captains or leaders of their industry. So they're, they're very, very smart, intelligent people. And a lot of them were saying to me, well, what's happening? Because it's impossible that Dubai is going to escape what's happening around the world, all the cost of living, all the economic like crises that seem to be on the horizon for a lot of nations. Again, they mentioned interest rates, but we've just covered that. And they're saying that Dubai, they're asking me my take, because they're saying Dubai has to be 
affected. It, it can't. It can't remain unscathed. So, what's your take on that in terms of what's going to happen over the next twelve months in Dubai? Are we reaching the top? Is there further for us to go? Do we see demand or transactions dropping? I debate with everyone every probably every day, and especially with people back at home and yeah, foreign investors who come over and they think that it's we've hit the peak. I don't think. I honestly don't think we're nowhere near the peak. And I've said it so many times, and I think we've said it on so many pods that the place is still undervalued. Yes, we're seeing a lot from our luxury side of things, not just internally, but externally, where you know there was a property that sold for 410 million dirhams, but that's an anomaly. That they don't happen every single day. Although it feels like it does at the moment in Dubai, but yeah, I know, I know what you're saying. No, yeah. there's something different. Yeah. Think that plot of land sold 136 million, but I just don't see, like, say, our bread and butter is between. I think not just our bread and butter, but the whole of Dubai, I think between 1 million and 3 million made up of 89% of all transactions last year. It's still a fall. Which is amazing as well, because that's a mature, that's a mature market. And that shit, like you said, the, the everyday bread and butter is what we'd say, when I say normal, I mean, not like the ultra high net worth individuals, it's people going out to jobs like me and you, nine to five, well, um, on a weekly basis, but they're putting down their roots and they're, they're making to buy their home. It's just adjusting, like you say, a lot of sometimes, listen, I want to live in, in Emirates Hills, but I can't afford it. But people who want to live in specific areas, they just have to adjust whether it be the affordability from a mortgage side or whether it be they just can't afford the down payments. What they're doing, they're just adjusting whether they're going further afield. And like we always say, it's not, Dubai's not far anymore. And what I mean by that, where I live and where, where you live, that was always miles away. It's not no more. Everywhere is 15, 20 minutes, no matter where you are. Obviously, with the infrastructure that's being put in place. I was going down Al Qaeda yesterday, and there was two ring rolls that were going in. And all of a sudden, they're up. All up in three or four weeks' time, there'll be some another bit of infrastructure, with what means that we can get to somewhere five minutes earlier. And we're so, so lucky that way. So people are just adjusting. So the answer to your question, again, I don't think, saying we're nowhere near the peak, I think this place is still so undervalued compared again to major cities. And when you say well, you can't compare this place to major cities, 100% you can, 100%. And I'll have an argument with anyone who says any different because going back to what I said, how secure the place is, the infrastructure, what you can do, lifestyle, F&B, opportunity. And again, it's opportunity for our children as well. So the answer to your question is, I think there's still quite a bit to go, yeah. Good. So I mentioned, um, obviously, the Eid celebrations at the weekend. Obviously, the period of time before Eid is Ramadan. So what did we see over Ramadan? Because there is a perception out there that when uh, Ramadan hits, the market slows down. And, yeah. and I, I don't know, people have more time away from the market or yeah. it's not as busy. So what did we see? Don't forget as well, there was Easter holidays in the UK. So a lot of people traveled. Obviously, Ramadan, you had Eid as well. So there was three big, big things within probably back a back, 30, yeah. 40 day period. But like you say, people want a piece of this place. And I think the way the market is performing, they are a little bit reluctant to dip the top of the market because they're worried about missing out. Um, just looking at some of our figures here, we had 62% increase in viewings in sales. There was a, uh, it's a 53 percent increase in letting and what that shows me a this time because obviously a lot of people are working shorter hours so there's time there but again people want to want a piece of this place they want to see and again obviously there's a lot more to look at as well so don't forget so you're getting people who maybe six seven twelve months ago would only be looking at three or four properties now they may be looking at six or seven properties in multiple areas they may start at one you know yourself people will call in from maybe a portal or from, from our website on specific property, they never usually buy that property for, they buy something else. So in terms of, of viewing uh, figures, we've seen nothing like it, we've seen absolutely nothing. And that just coincides with what we saw last week and um, with the, the amount of people that, and you see the roles as well. Yeah, no, I agree. And I'm always reluctant to talk about all sorts and all sorts performance, but it's just to illustrate a point. We'll have our best ever month in business. We've already had our best ever month in business with Sounds three days a, a month ago. Right. It is, but I, I'm sure other companies and the, the Dubai Land Department will report the same, but yeah. it just illustrates the point that 
this is on the back of, like you say, three kind of major holiday events yeah. where you think maybe people take a bit bit more time out the market. Well, there's also a byproduct of, of, of activity. We, we always, we measure on activity internally. I'm sure other companies out there as well measure on activity. You know, you look at the, I mentioned there, 87.2 billion dirhams worth of, of, and that's transfer property. That's property that have actually changed hands. I expect that to be more in the coming next two or three months just on the back of a three months cycle, usually how long it takes to transfer a property. So I, I expect that to to touch a hundred billion, Mark Paul, I, I really do. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised at all. Um, let's come on to another, um, i say hot topic, it was is a hot topic in Dubai, but the off-plan market, Yeah. what have we seen there so far this year? Well, there was 50, I think, things I've got here, it was 51% of all, um, transactions in Q1 were off plan. And I think that's, it's a couple of things for me. A, and I don't want to harp on about this too much, but I think it's a, it's a, it's a very, very, it's a hot topic and it's a valid point. The ambiguity surrounding tenants, um, obviously people don't want to have any sort of headache when they're buying a property where there's a, a tenant in situ and there's ambiguity around is the um, vacating notices transferable and whatnot. So what people are doing now, they don't want the heady. Some people don't have a payment, they shut it down. Uh, the down payments are 20% or 30% and they have a payment plan so they can accumulate funds over the course of a period of time. And then in the two years, they have no problems of moving into their property. So we think that's got a big factor. I think that, 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 that's a massive factor. Plus the fact of you know affordability as well. Some of these um, developments now, you've got Expo City that I've seen a couple of days back. Great properties. Oh, that, that's going to be superb. We're down at Expo City. And again, it's it, the stigma of how far it is. It's not far at all. It's 20 minutes up the road. And the payment plans, I think, in one case, was like a six or seven year payment plan or something. It was, it's so, so attractive. So going back to the adjustment, that's what people are looking at now. But going back to the, to, to the off plan, it's so buoyant. And not just... We mentioned before about between 1 million and 3 million, the luxury end as well. I touched on before, you know, there was two properties in Bulgari, more 410, one for 160 million items. It's, it seems like, like you said, it's, it's, um, it's happening every single week. Well, another interesting point. So we're currently researching, um, our head of uh, PR, Aline, is currently researching a story more aimed at the luxury end of off plan in terms of it. It seems that uh, flipping off plan properties it is coming back again. So if people are, are getting into some of the more the more high end luxury premium spot uh, off plan launches, if they're managing to secure a unit themselves, if they got I don't know if they're lucky, if they got contacts at a developer, what they're doing a couple of weeks later is selling it at, at quite a premium because the, the market is buoyant and it is there is so much demand out there. It's true. And we mentioned off camera about a couple of people that we know we bought properties and it wasn't. Listen, it wasn't a three or four week period. It's over a, a, a two, or maybe a two or three year period. They've doubled the money. They've doubled the money. Yes, they took a punt because it was it was in. Co they've doubled the money, and we're seeing. You know, we, there was developments that that launched a few weeks back in JLT, and um, a brilliant development called um, Upper House, and there's already people now who because there's, they sold out, people want to buy at a premium. And that was only three or four weeks ago, Paul. So what Alini said is is Yeah, is correct, exactly. Yeah. Is one hundred percent correct. And obviously at the at the luxury end as well, the margins are, are, are a lot more attractive as well, you know. Good. And one last topic to cover, I guess, before we before we sign off is apartments and villas. Mm -hmm. What we see in the trends so far this year in terms of because we noted at, and it's going back a little bit through down after Villas came to the forefront, and last year's it was like apartments were back in demand again, and yep. the, the trend was really heavily uh, weighted towards apartments last year. Yep. So, what we're seeing so far this year in terms of, of what the demand is out there? Well, it was twenty. You think there's twenty nine thousand transactions, and twenty two thousand of them transactions were apartment sales. So it's still really, really buoyant. Again, the villa communities, people do like space, but the apartment side of things, and I think a lot of the apartment, we mentioned before, about 81% of transactions in, uh, in Dubai were off plan. You look at the up and coming areas, the likes of Arjan, um, Al-Fajan, 
the amount of apartment blocks that are coming up there that are so attractive again great payment plans and um, really nice just nice one or two beds remove apartments you know in good areas schools surrounding the, the area and good returns as well so yeah i think that's continued the, the continuation of the apartments is 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 definitely being there to see this uh, in q1 i think it'll continue as well good the reason i like to highlight this for for anyone watching is because probably people out there they, they go to this weekend they'll be at dinner parties they'll be at barbecues they'll be at the beach and they'll be talking about the market and is it overinflated is it a dangerous time to get in there is you know the the bubble growing too big but the fact that apartments are, are by far and away the majority of the market the fact that most 81 percent of the transactions are between one and three million to me it says no because that's the that's the starter end of the market that's the sign of a mature market that's people laying down foundations getting getting yeah. on the property ladder so for anyone out there that is is worried the market is overinflated now and it's probably not the time to get in. I'd argue otherwise, because all the data is that it, it, it's not the top end of the market. The top end of the market gets the headlines, yeah. but it's not the top end of the market that, that's driving what's going on. No, it, it's right across the board. Although you've got your three top um, seven properties are apartments. Like you say this, this, the bottom end as well, the five, six, seven hundred thousand dirhams where people are bidding at home because the returns are so, so good. And again, it's in areas where people would be a little bit, you probably turn your nose up a little bit, but now they're not because the infrastructure being put in place, just for that, for I can see where, where our son, but our sons go to school. I remember when we put our kids in, into, into, into the school, there was no infrastructure around the area, which is, which is Arjan. Now you go there, there's yeah. greenery everywhere. There's pathways, there's shops. There's again, apartment blocks, nice shiny apartment blocks. And it's attractive. It's really, really attractive. Yeah, it's true. Okay, that's it. That's us done for today. I hope you've enjoyed listening. If you do have any questions, if you'd like us to dig any deeper into any particular data set or clarify anything further, please get in touch. If not, please follow, subscribe, like, etc., etc., and we'll be back with you soon. Thank you.